Hi, it's Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop and welcome back to my channel where I make a lot of cake and cookie decorating videos as well as give a lot of baking business tips. So today we are back at Happy Cakes where we're going to make some very disgusting cupcakes and we're also going to show you how they make some DIY kits at the store. So let's get into it. So a huge shout out to my friend Rachel who is allowing us to once again film the magic that happens at her bakery here in Surrey, British Columbia. And yes, she is dressed as a giant cupcake but she very soon ditches the costume because although she looks fabulous, it is not the easiest thing to dress as a cupcake while you're decorating cupcakes. So here are all of the cupcakes at the shop. These are the ones that are not for DIY kits or anything like that. These are just the regular shop orders and this is what happens when you you do do some sort of promotional thing like a special DIY kit nothing else changes it's just extra work on your plate how fabulous are these figurines I believe this is all for a Fortnite cake and I really love this little tip here this is American buttercream but we're just steaming the cake a little bit and then placing those figures on a lot of you guys ask me how do you attach fondant or figures to a cake that's buttercream steaming it is a great technique this part also has very little to do with Halloween. In fact, nothing at all, but I just absolutely loved that cake, so I had to share it with you guys. This one was also done this morning as well, and we have this fun Paw Patrol candy cake too. Now, on to those DIY kits. So the first thing I want to show you here is where they get all of their packaging, and they get it from Uline. Now, this is the packaging specifically utilized to create these DIY kits, not the actual bakery boxes themselves, I believe. So today Rachel is completing the morning's orders and these are all pre-ordered. So the DIY kits are not just something that they have stock in the shop. You do have to pre-order them. So in there we have some cookie dirt which gets put in these little cups. And then we also have all of those sprinkles that were individually packaged. And you'll notice that we had those skulls and those little eyeballs. The skulls were made out of a fondant press. And then they're also put into these handy dandy packages as well. And then here we have some fondant plaques. And this was also made from a mold. Last year I found that cookie DIY and cupcake DIY kits really blew up so Rachel decided to kind of go off the same theme and the same things that she did last year for this year's kits as well. And here she is making her buttercream and as you saw there that's how big her scoop truly is. Some of you commented on the previous video where I showed her making her cupcakes what exactly is the size of her scoop and it's pretty large. So as all of the individual pieces are being packaged and put together, she is going to place them into the boxes. And one of the things that I really liked that she did was put these fondants in a protective little casing. Really important to make sure that if you are going to include something like these fondant plaques inside of your DIY kits that you put some sort of protective layering on it because those type of things can get wrecked pretty easily. Now when Rachel said she was going to prepare the fondant next, I thought it was going to be little lumps of fondant, but this makes a lot more sense because you can control the size and you also make sure that the texture of the fondant is going to be workable, especially for those people that don't necessarily have all the fondant tools at home. The next thing to do now is to actually wrap the fondant. So she's putting two colors together and then she's also wrapping that around first so that that black doesn't bleed into the white. I guess it's a little bit more on the gray side, I should say. Another little tip that I can give you for these DIY kits is that Rachel put a little disclaimer on the bottom of the sale of these, which just noted that it was subject to availability and some of the products may differ slightly, which I think is a great thing to put on there just in case you end up getting a lot more orders than you thought and then you couldn't get in all of your product shipments, especially right now we're having lots of issues with shipments in general with materials. So this will really save you so that people will make sure that they're not fully, fully expecting to receive the exact same thing as shown in the picture. Though of course you want to make best practice and best effort to do so. Now for an additional Halloween flair and also to make sure that we prevent all of that from shifting when it's in the box, adding in some tissue paper. And then she's going ahead and she's placing in her buttercream inside of these containers. And a side note about these containers, they're also from Uline and they are microwave safe. So if you ever do end up purchasing these, these are great for candy melts, especially when you have an array of colors. By the way, this is by no means sponsored by Uline. We just love sharing with you what we use so that you can go and find the same things too. 
I like that these come in the DIY kit, not in a piping bag. That way you could mix and match the colors or you could decide to just use one color and it also makes sure that you can do a quick re-whip as well. Though I'm not sure how much re-whipping the average customer might do with these. Next on here is a guideline to kind of give some tips on how to best create your beautiful and delicious Halloween cupcakes. Now, if this were me, I think I would do some sort of follow-up video and put a link there so that customers could check out how I personally would decorate them. But of course, there are some customers that just want to let their creativity flow. I don't know why, but this next part to me was so, so satisfying. I had just never seen anybody do this before, so I was really intrigued. So what we're doing here is she's filling up the piping bags with another piping bag. And I would have probably just spooned it in because that's how I fill my piping bags. But this makes a lot more sense because you get a more controlled amount in there. And also it prevents any of that buttercream from going up the sides at all. So you don't have to like squish it back down. Now, I don't know exactly how many kits Rachel made last year, but I do know that it was probably in the hundreds. So I think that's where she picked up a lot of these tips on efficiency on how to create these DIY kits. A lot of times we think a DIY kit will be easier because it's all deconstructed and you're not actually decorating anything. But just putting the materials into where they need to go and getting the materials ready takes quite a long time. Now I know that Rachel's shop exclusively uses American buttercream, but I also recommend this for when you're doing DIY kits instead of Italian meringue or Swiss meringue. Just because American buttercream has a very long shelf life in comparison to the meringue based buttercreams. Another thing that Rachel includes in her DIY kits is a tip, which I just think is a little bit of luxury, a little bit of fun. I know it's not a super expensive item, but coming from somebody that maybe doesn't bake a lot, it's definitely something that they're probably not just going to go randomly pick up on their own. So it's a nice added touch. And these are Happy Cakes Beautiful DIY Kits. And we will get into the pricing of everything later on in the video as per usual. Now here comes the disgusting and admittedly for myself the scariest part of the video. I never ever ever thought that I would ever feature any of these things on my channel especially when talking about baked goods but I have a little confession. I am not a fan of condiments at all. The idea of dipping my fries in ketchup is literally one of the most disgusting things I can think of. And I would like to call myself a fairly adventurous eater. I try lots of different foods from lots of different regions, but it's something about the standard condiments that I really can't stomach. And the thought of putting these things into a product that people actually want and are willing to pre-order and pay for is mind-blowing to me, but here we are. So the basic premise of these cupcakes is that half of the cupcakes are going to be filled with delicious fillings that Happy Cakes puts in their cupcakes normally, and half is going to be filled with all of this random stuff. So first off, we're starting with the alfagetti. And I don't know if this is a Canadian staple or if this is something that a lot of you guys have. Have, but basically it's like a tomato based pasta almost like consistency except the noodles have been sitting in the can for a long time so they're very very soft there's no bite to them so Rachel is doing her due diligence by really squishing in the beans and the alfagetti into the center of those cupcakes next up is the toothpaste which I think that if I had to bite into any of these this would be the one that I want to bite into and we did make sure that this is kids toothpaste which is safe to ingest although we don't recommend eating a whole tube of toothpaste by any means. And the next thing is the mustard. And that just horrifies me to my very core that somebody is going to be biting into these. This very much is reminiscent of the jelly bean game where you have really delicious jelly beans and then you have a whole bunch of jelly beans that have less than desirable flavors and you take turns eating a jelly bean. So in this instance though, you would take turns eating the cupcakes and hopefully you end up with a really delicious cupcake and not one of these. My sister really wanted Rachel and I to do this challenge particularly on camera for you guys, but this is the one thing that I don't think that I could possibly do without it getting really gross. So I decided against that. And our last product here is the cream of wheat. Again, this one isn't the worst of the worst. I think it's more of a not so great textural experience. 
So finally, all of the gross flavors are over and done with. We are adding in some of this strawberry filling, which smells divine, but this is the one time where I am glad that you guys don't have smell-o-vision, where you can smell what we're doing, because the mix of the strong toothpaste smell with the ketchup smell and the strawberry smell, it's all very overwhelming, and I just can't wait until Rachel actually ices the top of these. <laughs> and then, then we also have the lemon and the Bavarian cream as well. And we're also going to put in some of the cream cheese filling, which is a big fan favorite. So hopefully that makes up for some of the disgusting fillings that are in here. So let me know down in the comments below, guys, if you run a bakery, have you ever offered something like that? Or after watching this video, would you think of offering something like this? And if you don't run a bakery, let me know down in the comments, would you actually play this game and try it out? So we've made it to the beautifying part of the video. We are mixing up this American buttercream and adding in some Chef Master Orange. We really want to get a nice bright orange color for those fall and Halloween vibes. And for all of the cupcakes today, she is using a classic 1M tip. And Happy Cakes does generally use the 1M tip for most of their cupcakes. I believe there might be a few that use a rounded tip. We noticed as Rachel was icing these that some of the alfagetti and the baked beans had really been soaked up in the cake. I don't know if that's going to make things better or worse. Now for a little red chocolate drizzle, and this was colored with a fat-soluble colorant. Of course, you always want to use that for when you're coloring chocolate. Now this has a very loose consistency, which makes it nice and drippy, but for a drip, you don't necessarily need to add any flavorless oil to it to get this nice little squiggle on there. But if you want to, you can definitely add some to make it nice and smooth. And if you are planning on making trick or treat cupcakes as they are called, then definitely make sure that you have good coverage of buttercream all around so that nobody can see what the flavor is inside. Also, I know that some of you had suggested that you wanted to hear kind of the bakery sounds, but unfortunately, I really, really tried this time to just get the sounds of the bakery in there so you could really hear it. However, because the mixer was going, it was far too loud. Now that little kit is standing there all alone because that one is actually not filled with anything. A customer had requested that they wanted the trick or treat look, but they didn't actually want the trick inside, which is understandable and is probably the option that I would have gone with as well. Next up, we've got our classic blue frosting. I really love the mix of colors on this. It very much speaks to the way that Happy Cakes ices their stuff, but it has that little twist of Halloween on there. I'm also in love with all of the sprinkle mixes that Rachel got for Halloween this year and she so generously let me have some as well and I will show you what I did with my sprinkles at the end of this video. And it is important with Rachel's buttercream to make sure that we sprinkle right away because it does set very quickly, especially because the air conditioning is pretty high at Happy Cakes. And next up, we've got our purple buttercream. I love a good dash of purple in Halloween stuff. And we did add a little bit of that red to that because I find that Chef Master is a bit cool when it comes to their purple. So adding that red in gives it a really nice classic purple look. And a generous dose of these quins. Again, I'm loving the color of these quins and they look so good against that nice bright purple. A lot of you have been asking me how I color my Italian meringue buttercream. And honestly, I do it the exact same way as I color the American buttercream. You just have to go a little bit longer with it. Aside from condiments, fear of the unknown is also really scary to me. So this is a very deceptively beautiful but very scary cupcake kit. Now let's get into the pricing of both of these things. We're going to look at both the DIY kit and we're going to look at those trick-or-treat cupcakes. So first up is our DIY kit and this would be a stock order only, meaning it's going to come exactly as is for that price. And although these are a stock order, I do highly recommend that you always go for a pre-order with your DIY cupcake kits just so that you know how many to prepare. And for these trick-or-treat cupcakes, it would be $22 Canadian per box. Again, highly recommend a pre-order for these, especially because this is going to be a much harder sell in your showcase. And after the past couple weeks of birthdays and having to make a lot of treats for those, I felt like staying pretty low-key for Halloween this year, so I made these yummy donuts with my kids. 
Now let's get into the subscriber submission of the day. So this is a beautiful wedding cake made by Sophie's underscore sweets underscore treats. Make sure that you get all of those dots and underscores in there and be sure to follow them. And if you want to be the next featured subscriber on my channel, be sure to follow me at SD Bake Shop where you can either send me a photo or you can tag me in a photo. And I do try to make sure to like them all so you know that I've seen them. Thanks so much for watching guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can be part of the Sweetie Fam. Right now I'm uploading weekly so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Also be sure to comment, request, or ask a question. I love hearing from you guys. Bye!